Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to explain your decision tree model. Decision tree classifier model to be specific. In the last video, I kind of um, showed you how to build a decision tree classifier model. All right. And in that last video, we called our decision tree classifier model DTC. So if you see me using DTC in this video, that is where it is coming from. DTC is the variable that we use to store our decision tree classifier model. All right. So in the last video, we built a decision tree classifier model. I also showed in the last video, like after you have built some, after you've built your model using a decision tree classifier, you have access to some attributes like um, classes and future importances max features and classes and features and output tree all right so basically you have access to different attributes and in this video we'll mostly focus on the future importances attributes all right we can also explore this other attribute but i want to focus on showing you how to use future importances to kind of help you explain your model so with that being said, let me go ahead and do DTC dot future importances. And there we, it is right here. We have um, the future importances from this model. But just um, looking at this, what does these future importances actually mean? Well, future importance on means on average is how is each future decreasing the tree models impurity. When a tree splits a node, it uses the impurity, which is information gain, and this is equivalent of variance for regression model, to decide which future, which future to use to split the node. So basically, the future importance is how the tree knows which future to use to split at a node. So the future that produces the lowest impurity, so by future, I mean like column, right? Future is synonymous with column. The future that produces the lowest impurity will be used to do the split. This means that we can kind of use our future importance to gauge how important each future is. This might allow us to achieve the same high accuracy using less features by just selecting the most important features from a data frame. So basically in summary, Future importance is how much each future contributes to decreasing the weighted impurity of the decision tree classifier. And um, this is a blog that I found on Toward Data Science that kind of does a good job of explaining future importance a little bit more in detail. When you get access to this notebook, you can click on it and go and watch it. I mean, read this. Each one of these future importance is associated with each future. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. So if we go ahead and do DTC.classes, you see that we have, um, I think we have seven classes. So we have um, seven classes in, in our target variable. And we can look at other attributes. It says seven, basically gives you the exact same information. Um, so there's different other things that you can look at here. So if it, it has this underscore and then underscore at the end, it means it's an attribute like maximum features is an attribute. The maximum features is 11. That's because our X data frame um, has 11 columns. And uh, number of output, number of features. You can look at that if you want to, but you can explore the different attributes a little bit, but let's go ahead and continue to extrain dot columns. As you can see, these are the columns from our data frame. So if I go ahead and do extrain dot head, um, you can see um, this is the columns in our data frame. And this is the exact same columns here. So each one of these future importance correspond to each one of these columns. Just looking at the future importance, 
and just looking at the column, it's kind of difficult to make the association of which features are important and which features are not so important. So it is best to combine these um, columns with these feature importances and kind of create a visual graph to kind of easily see the most important features in reducing the weighted impurity of um, the model. So to combine um, this and this, we're just going to create a pandas data frame. So earlier in this notebook, I did import pandas as PD. So if you see me using PD, PD means pandas. PD.series, let's call it um, called PD.series. So we're just going to create a series between our data, which is the importance, and the columns. And then um, let me just do go off. So um, now we have taken this data and these columns and kind of put them together into a pandas series. You know, so you can see which columns are associated with which future potencies. And this is nice. This is good. This is better than what we had before, but still is not as intuitive to look at like if you're trying to explain this to people somebody it will be much easier to just show them a visualization of which features are most important so let's just go ahead and visualize this so this is a magic command right, right here and then um let's do go off dot sort values dot plot dot bar h and i'm just gonna leave the default i mean i could change the color to red let's say let's do that and let's go and run this that looks cool doesn't it so basically right here we basically just um took this pandas series that we created here and plotted it using matplotlib. I'm I am able to do dot plot dot bar h because I am using matplotlib in this environment. So if you're working in Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, or wherever you're working at, make sure you have um, matplotlib first. And this bar just means bar graph. This h means horizontal, and just the color red. All right, and basically now just looking at this graph, it makes it easier to see that alcohol, um, volatile acidity, free sulfur, free sulfur dioxide, and then these things has like the most impact predicting wine quality. Like these are the features that has the most impact in predicting wine quality. Another method for explaining a decision tree classifier model is by using um, the precision, the recall, and the F1 score. So quickly, I am going to show you the precision, the recall, and the F1 score for this particular model. And getting that is very easy and straightforward. So you simply do from sklearn.metrics, import classification report, and then you do print classification report, and then you put in your white test and uh, white bread DTC, I believe that's what I call it. And basically, um, it, this classification report just basically gives you the precision, the recall, and the F1 score for each one of these classes. And in a different video, I go into detail about precision, recall, and F1 score. So make sure you go ahead and watch that video if you need more information about it. But this is another method of looking and explaining and validating or evaluating your decision tree classifier, classification, classifier model. And it also gives you the accuracy score. And of course, from your decision tree classifier model, you can also build a confusion matrix. And from your confusion matrix, you'll be able to calculate the precision, the recall, and the F1 score. And in a different video, I'll show you how to build a confusion matrix. But in this video, I'm going to do it um, very quickly. In a different video, I go into detail 
of how to create a confusion matrix and subsequently how to create a classification report like this from the confusion matrix. But just to cut this video short, this right here is the confusion matrix for this decision tree classifier model. All right, so basically there are a couple of techniques that you can use to help you explain your model and evaluate how good your model is. You could create a visual graph like this one to kind of see which features are the most important. You can create a classification report like this to look at the precision recon F1 score, or you could create a confusion matrix like this one um, to get raw data, raw numbers about your model. So that's basically it for this video. To get access to this notebook that I used in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com. This is a platform I created for giving you access to all my resources. So if you click on free data science resources, it will bring you to this page. And from here, you'll be able to get access to my resources. So I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blog posts. And I end up with a lot of notebooks. And I just find it very easier and more straightforward to have a single platform where I put all my notebooks all my videos, all my blog posts, everything. So if you go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free, you'll be able to get access um, to this notebook that I use in today's video. You can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs. And as time goes by, I'm going to create more and more data science blogs. So that's evidencen.com. And here, you, once you're here, you can click on free data science resources and then you'll be able to get to this page too. That's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And let me know if you have any comments in the comment section below. If you made it this far in this video, but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.